Hello everyone. There's a sneaky little plant that seems to be popping up in gardens and roadsides everywhere I look lately and this particularly frustrating plant is fast becoming one of the most invasive weeds around. She's called Drymeria cordata or Drymeria, sometimes known as tropical chickweed. And she's an obstinate, sticky, persistent lady. Drymeria comes from the Latin for forest implying that it sometimes grows along forest edges and cordata means heart-shaped which tells you the shape of the leaves but just a quick side note on weeds what a weed is is quite a nebulous category a weed is basically any persistent plant that you don't really want in your garden so by that definition a rose if it keeps popping up in your garden and you don't want it is a weed and Drameria cordata is a relative of chickweed, which is also just as frustrating a, a plant. But what makes tropical chickweed such a frustrating plant is that it's incredibly fast growing. It seeds itself very easily and its seed pods are incredibly sticky. So they stick to animal fur, they stick to bird feathers, they stick to shoes as you walk through the, the plants. They stick to your pants and even to garden equipment. So they, they get spread very quickly around the place. And each little capsule contains three tiny, like minuscule little black seeds, which also germinate incredibly fast. The best way to get rid of it is just to fastidiously remove every trace of it the moment you see it. It comes out of the ground really easily. You've just got to make sure that you don't leave any of these little seed pods behind. But once it's established in your lawn or your garden, it's another story. I've just actually recently been to a garden where the entire lawn is just Drymeria. It smothered the lawn completely. And the problem with that now is that it's been there for a while and it's seeded itself. And so there's now this seed bank of Drymeria in the soil. And you could pull out all the plants that you see, but those seeds will just germinate. And so to think that you could get it under control by just pulling it out, it just doesn't make sense. So unfortunately, once it's established in your lawn or your garden, the only way to get rid of it now is the chemical route. And I'll run through what to use in a minute. I'm a pragmatic idealist when it comes to gardening. I would always rather look for alternative ways of solving problems than going the chemical route. I'll always ask myself a few questions. So can or should I be living with this problem? In other words, am I fighting against nature when I should be working with nature instead? A uh, second part to that question is, is, is this something that I would be doing irreparable damage to the environment, uh, even if it's just on a small scale? So an example of that is uh, you, to get rid of moles, one of the only things that really works is this horrible uh, chemical called aluminium bromide. And you, you put these little pellets into the soil and it releases this gas and it sinks down into the, the soil, it obviously kills the moles, but it kills everything else. It's, it's, a, it's a terrible thing. So I, I would rather live with moles, to be honest, or, or phone renter Yorkshire Terrier or something like that. But the third question is, are the long-term costs of allowing something to persist worth it? So I could do a little spot spray now and, and this might prevent me having to spray my entire garden in six months time. So you've got to weigh up the costs involved. And then the other thing is, is it sustainable? I mean, I might have to resort to spraying a herbicide to maintain my, my pristine lawn without any weeds in it. But is this something that I'm going to have to do regularly from now on just to kind of maintain the status quo? At the end of the day, it all boils down to, am I willing to pay the costs of my actions? Um, Henry David Thoreau's profound quote is my mantra with this. The cost of a thing is the amount of what I will call life is required to be exchanged for it, either immediately or in the long run. Basically, everything costs life and it's, it's either mine or it's something else's or it's someone else's. Is that cost worth it? But in this case, with Drymeria cordata spreading rampantly through our gardens, I think sometimes the cost is actually worth it. But before we run through how to excommunicate her from your gardens, I thought it's only fair to Drymeria to give you a little bit of her good side. And actually, it's quite an amazing good side. So you could try eating her out of your garden. 
Trimeria cordata is actually edible. It, you can actually put it into a salad. It's got a little bit of a bitter taste to it, which, which comes from the saponins in the, in the plant. But maybe don't eat too much of it because in quantities it actually has a little bit of a laxative effect. But it's actually on the medicinal side that she really shines. Tropical chickweed has been used throughout the world in traditional medicines for its many reparative properties. It has scientifically measured pain relieving, fever reducing, cough inhibiting uh, effects. Its pain relieving properties at particular doses are the equivalent of aspirin or sometimes even better than aspirin. Unfortunately, many of our gardens have such quantities of it that eating it or self-medicating won't get rid of it. And so spraying carefully is honestly the best option. So if you have no other alternative but to go the chemical route, the best thing to use is a broadleaf herbicide, something that has both 2,4-D and MCPA in it. So that would be something like turf weeder. Banweed will do the trick, but it doesn't have 2,4-D in it follow the directions on the packaging you don't want to overspray you don't want to kill off your entire lawn certain types of grass don't do very well when they sprayed with a herbicide so you don't want to be killing off your entire lawn also when you spray make sure you're not spraying huge droplets you want to actually be spraying a fine mist that'll just coat the the top surface of the leaves and make sure you do it on a day where there's no wind because that fine spray will land on other plants and it's a broadleaf herbicide so it'll kill off anything that has a broad leaf and again ask yourself that question are the costs of me spraying chemicals really worth it is this something that i can deal with by hand can i pull it out if you can rather do that than go the chemical route so i hope that gives you some idea of how to get rid of drymaria in your gardens um, but also gives you a little bit of a, a the positive side to this interesting plant a little bit later this week I'm going to be doing June gardening tips, what you should be looking at doing in your garden in winter. And so stay, stay tuned for that. Otherwise, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll keep you updated. Happy gardening.